I'm going to talk about alignment first, and then engagement, and then participation. Um, I also want to start the conversation by uh, defining what I'm going to talk about in terms of communities today. Uh, communities, as we know, are not necessarily geographical. Someone referred to that earlier. Um, I'm going to talk about community in terms of how we, as retail cooperators, sort of think about our most immediate community, which is the board of directors, the members, and the staff. Certainly, there's other folks that are um, engaged in this discussion. Uh, just really briefly, Mississippi Market has two locations. We opened up our West 7th store in 2009. We're on our fourth year of over 15% growth at that location. We're maintaining 8% growth at our Selby location, and we just finished a center store remodel two weeks ago. So uh, we also started this last year an online ordering service. We're called Mississippi Market at Your Door, and we do a direct delivery service to customers uh, in the St. Paul area. And we just turned our first profit on that. I think it was like six bucks, but we turned a profit <laughs> on it. Um, and if any of you are interested in that, I'd be happy to talk to you about it afterwards. The short version is we're partnering with a company called GoGo -Go Grocery. We don't keep the inventory. We don't pay the staff. It's everything you want to not be doing and do this. So. Today, though, I want to talk about these three key stakeholders, board of directors, members, and staff, in terms of um, what it means as these community members converge um, to become aligned, to become engaged, and participate in the growth of co-ops. Um, first, we're going to start here with our board of directors. For me, I thought the really important thing is um, to talk about why I changed it to alignment first is because I think it needs to be an alignment that happens within the walls of the organization, um, or at least within the minds of the organization. You need that vision and you need that agreement that growth is the direction you want to go in, and if you don't have that as a fundamental tenant, things will get weird really quickly. Um, these are two of our board members. Tracy actually is no longer on our board, but she's lovely, and this is Nabil. He's on our board now. Um, and these two board members are at our annual meeting having a conversation about why they're on the board, what excites them about it. And I think when you as a general manager or you as a staff member can work with your board to create that unified vision, you create a space where you now have a core of cheerleaders that are going to help move that vision of growth forward. Um, and at one of our tables, we talked about the difference between being reactive and being responsive. Having a vision of growth allows you to be responsive when you're encountering people who are concerned about growth, that it's going to compromise their experience at the co-op, that it's going to fundamentally change who you are. You're going to be corporate. Sure, you've heard it. So um, having that ability to have a unified vision creates the ability to be responsive to those concerns without changing the direction you're going or without having to be defensive about the vision that you have. And I think those are really important things to keep in mind. Um, as part of this, um, our board does support a vision of growth. Um, not only do they do that at the board level, but they walk their talk. Every month, uh, the board holds monthly coffee hours at one of our stores. And so any member can come and have coffee with a board member to chat with them about what any of their concerns are. Um, we also sometimes have a local happy hour for those who like to imbibe. Um, and we also do, um, we have opportunities where our board members will come and bag groceries for a couple hours at one of our locations just to talk to people coming through line about what the co-op is, what we do, um, talking about uh, the opportunity that we now have in front of us for potentially building a third store. So the board, member really get, the board members really get in front of this vision and really connect with the community at a lot of different levels to make this happen. And I think that's a huge gift and a really vital part of this. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was engaging members. So as I said, we have an opportunity in front of us where Mississippi Market might be looking at building a third location in East St. Paul. We were approached by a number of residents that lived in East St. Paul, so they brought this idea to us. We didn't pursue them. Um, and so we needed to talk to our existing membership, which is right at about 12,500 members active, about this opportunity. So what we did is we um, created um, a facilitated discussion with our members, partnering with uh, facilitators named Growth Work. They've done work with Seward, and they've done work, I think they've done work with Amy and Eastside as well. So Growth Works hosted some facilitated discussions for our members, and of course it's a co-op, so we fed them. So um, 
again, to go back to that idea of alignment, I can't emphasize enough that when you have that alignment and you have that ability to respond to concerns, you create a space where thoughtful discussion can happen. Um, we really enjoyed those member forums and members shared their concerns and fears where we're going into a community where we weren't welcome. Were we going to be gentrifying a community that had a lot of small corner stores? Once our members found out that in fact 140 members had formed their own co-op on the east side and aligned their membership with ours so that if we were to build on the east side we could create reciprocal membership with them. The members then saw that we weren't consuming an existing market share. We were generating an opportunity for new market share and for us to connect with a new community in St. Paul. This location is also less than a mile from the Mexican um, Embassy in St. Paul. And so we, all, we really are excited about this opportunity to honor both the diversity, um, the, the expansion of, of our cooperative message with new communities. And that was really valuable to us. And then there's staff engagement. Staff loves change. I'm a staff member, so I can say that. Um, so we also led, uh, facilitated discussions with our staff, and Susan wears two hats, to be fair. She worked in our produce department for a number of years, and she was also a staff member elected to our board, and she's also a good sport. So knowing that this is being videotaped, I thought I'd pick on Susan. Um, so out of the three primary stakeholders, the staff is honestly the least interested in our third growth strategy. Um, the conversations that we had with them in GrowthWorks brought to light a number of operational issues that we need to take on in terms of both looking at our wages, looking at our benefits, looking at how we are incorporating staff into this vision of growth that's shared between the general manager and the board. Um, and it's really helped us uh, get honest with ourselves about the fact that we have some work to do in terms of connectivity with our teams. One of the challenges is that uh, Selby opened in 99, the West 7th store opened in 2009, so we had a 10-year window to connect and grow. Now we're at a four-year window where we might be growing again. We currently have a staff of 180. If we opened this store, we'd be anywhere from 340 to 350, or I'm sorry, 240 to 250 staff. Um, and it feels really vital at this point for us to figure out how to create connectivity between all the locations and all of our staff. And that's really the, the biggest work that we have ahead of us right now. So <clears throat> looking forward, um, once you're clear the growth is the direction you want to go in, you have to work with key stakeholders to pick a direction for that growth. Uh, to tie it back to the three things, the three themes we talked about earlier, um, alignment comes with thoughtful discussion about what the growth might look like how it will impact the community, and what benefits can be realized through this vision. Uh, I think Pam's comment about what's in it for me is really powerful. Um, all of the stakeholders and all the community members do need to see a benefit for them in this growth because growth does cause stress. And there needs to be some level of payoff for that. Um, and I, I think, again, we just have so many opportunities. And the opportunities that we laid out this morning really speak to, to why that payoff is what that payoff is and why the stress is worth it. Ultimately, the key to any kind of engagement is transparency. If you want to grow, you have to be honest about it. It can't be a conversation between the GM and two board members in a back room. You have to get in front of your growth. You have to tout why growth is valuable. You have to have that alignment of vision with your board and with your team so that you're all moving in the same direction because it will take all of you to make growth successful. Um, once you get there, then the participation can be funneled in a number of areas. Um, when we look at uh, the folks that came to the, the um, member discussions, when you think about it, those members are most invested in the future of Mississippi market. So they are also most likely the members who'd be willing to donate to a member loan drive, for example. So you find your core, they come to you, and then you can talk about how they want to participate. Um, Another way to participate is purchases of memberships from community members in new areas as a so show of support for the new store. And that's really what folks on the east side of St. Paul have done. Of 140 of them put in $90 of their own money to say, we want you bad enough that we're going to pretend you're already here and show you that we want to be members. Um, staff being actively promoted into higher positions in the new environment. 
Um, as somebody at one of my tables this morning said, it isn't just about wages, it is about growth. If you can see cooperatives as a career for you, if you can see the value in making that choice long term, then you get a return on your investment both in terms of social return and also in terms of environmental return. And that's really valuable to staff. I don't know that I've done as good a job about selling that idea to staff as I need to. And so my opportunity when I go back home is really to think about that in my weekly meetings with staff and how I'm sharing my vision and my enthusiasm with them and finding out from them what makes them excited so I can respond to that in terms of our growth. Um, and then lastly, an expanded consumer base for our cooperative, your cooperatives, um, selling more local and organic products and keeping more money in the local economy where we all hope and know that it can do more good. So that's my presentation today. Thank you so much. Thank you.